Welcome to another video. Uh, today I'm going to be putting on a grip on a blank. Uh, it's probably one of my favorite parts of being a rod builder is really working with the grips. You can add a lot of personality and flair to your rod and really individualize it. Uh, so as with any step, particularly when you're working with glue, uh, prep work is going to be king. Um, having all that glue out there and kind of fumbling around and not quite sure where you're going with things is not the time to be second guessing. So I always like to start off with some prep work before I get rolling. First thing I like to do is have a game plan. So just mock up some grips. Uh, you can follow the traditional cigars and westerns at different wells, uh, limitless possibilities out there. Um, I like to draw them uh, actual size and get some measurements going. So when I am turning, I always have a reference point and an anchor to fall back on. Uh, other things is uh, prepping your cork rings. Uh, generally, if you buy cork rings, uh, they're gonna come with a quarter inch bore, uh, the hole in the middle, and that's gonna be good to get you going, but you're gonna wanna enlarge them. And um, you can try to drill them out, but cork gets messy and it chips and it breaks. So what I like to do, is use the drill rod side of the drill and not the actual cutter side. And I just gradually and incrementally get larger drill bits and I kind of ream out the hole a little bit, kind of stretch it, cork compacts. So that's gonna help you achieve a good diameter on your blank. As far as fit, um, it should be snug. Uh, but they're not loose. Uh, so you still want a little bit of pressure to slide it onto your blank so it, it doesn't like slip and fall. But you're also going to want a little bit so you don't starve uh, that glue joint uh, because you don't want to be squeegeeing off all of your glue as you do the cork rings. So it's a, uh, you just kind of tell, it doesn't take much effort to spin it or force it but it's also not going to just fall off the rod. Other things I like to prep is uh, the reel seat. So you're gonna to wanna to mark on your blank the distance of your reel seat. So once you have your reel seat, you can just kind of slide it on and give yourself a little tape reference mark. Uh, basically allowing you to know that you don't want any cork down below that or above it. And when I glue on the, on the blank, I don't like to use the real seat. So I create a spacer. This is just PVC and I got a little cap on it. This is just a little spool keeper from a thread of uh, copper uh, that you get at your fly tying shops. And I just uh, bored out the hole so it fits over the butt section. It pops into this PVC. And the reason I do that is because I'm going to be applying a lot of pressure with my clamp and I don't want those hard edges to dig into that cork at all. So this cork spacer is going to go here on the cork clamp. I'll show you the cork clamp. Pretty basic, simple construction. Uh, it's just a couple pieces of scrap wood uh, with some holes drilled together. As you can kind of see, they line up. Um, I think these are probably look like half inch uh, threaded rods and I got some wing nuts here on top and when I get everything together I can use those wing nuts and I can compress the cork and that's going to be important because uh, your cork doesn't come perfectly flat so it's not like it's been ran through a planer where each piece is going to perfectly sit so as you kind of see, I got these sandwiched together and there's a little bit of gap in there. So that cork clamp is gonna squeeze those together. Uh, also, when I put it on the blank, I'm gonna twist it and find out where uh, the cork lays flushest best. So that's gonna be an important step that we do. Also, the glue I use is Type Bond 3 and I apply it with the toothbrush. So I think we pretty much have everything laid down. So now I just want to show uh, what it's going to be like to glue the cork rings on a rod. I got them all laid out in the order that I like, uh, with the quality that I like, and I got all the holes 
uh, ream down or stretch so they slip onto the blank. So I'm going to be doing this in real time so you can take a good step-by-step uh, -step approach to putting rings on your blank. All right, I got everything's pretty much ready to roll. I got that little uh, cap on there that I was talking about, and I got that first ring ready to go. Now with this first ring, I don't want to put glue here and then push, push it down because that's just going to push the glue away. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of glue right in front of it for right now and then I'm gonna kind of push it up a little bit and this one is a little tighter than the other one just because I like that back one nice and tight and now I'm gonna got some glue on the inside now I'm gonna work it right down to that reference line or that tape line and then that should have that set right there so when I clamp it I don't slide my cork down any further because I want to make room for my real seat. Uh, and now it's just a matter of putting on the cork and gluing it. So I like to get all the cork ready on the blank. So just kind of have them staged and ready to go. So, take me a minute. I think I got 13 cork rings at a half inch width. So that's going to give me a six and a half inch grip on this rod. And one thing you'll notice when you start building bamboo rods is that bamboo has a shorter grip length than graphite. Graphite grips tend to be a lot longer. Of course, uh, a lot of the bamboo rods are going to come in that popular uh, seven and a half foot uh, size, eight foot size. So traditional trout rods, it's going to be a shorter grip. Now I got them all ready. So I'm going to be generous with this glue. So I'm going to slap it on because this cork will absorb kind of like an end cut on wood. And it's going to want to absorb some. So I want to be pretty uh, gracious with my glue. Put, put it on. And like I said, once it's there, just kind of turn it, find out where it sits best. And you want it on the faces and on the blank. And this whole grip, what be nice about it is each ring glued individually to each other, it's going to act as one unit. So it's really going to give uh, a nice bite onto that blank. There's enough stress and rod building on different steps, so it's uh, pretty enjoyable when you can just kind of, not that it's mindless, but it's pretty simple. It's relaxing. Type bond has a pretty good working time, so there's real no race against the clock. You could probably spin 10, 15 minutes with the type on without it, you know, wanting to set up on you. Once you get there and then kind of turn it till it fits nice and then spread that glue around. I get my cork uh, from different rod building vendors. Sometimes different years, different uh, vendors have different qualities. So it's always good to ask around other rod builders where they're getting good cork. Cork has a grading system, but the problem is it's not a universal standard. So floor, F-L-O-R, uh, is supposedly supposed to be 
the benchmark, the high mark, the highest quality of cork you can get. But not all floor is created equal. And a lot of different suppliers will start using different grading systems like A+, A++, Superb, Premium, Private Reserve, Private Stock. So it really makes it difficult. One company's floor just may be the very best cork that's out there, while the other guy is advertising premium AAA and it's actually not as good as their floor. What you're looking for is cork with minimum imperfections or fissures or pores, because they're going to create those long runs. And then when you turn it, it's impossible to get perfect cork, but you really want to do minimize that as much as you can. There's a couple little tricks you can do when you're selecting and sizing using gauges to kind of see underneath the cork as to when you turn it, what will be exposed. All right, one more, and then we're good for the clamp. All right, there we go, there we go, kind of see how I turned that one and it sit right in there nice, a little bit of a gap there, but that should press together, all right, let's put in our mocked up real seat spacer, and we're going to put on the top part of our clamp, Get our threads through the hole. Looks like everything's lined up. They got fancier cork presses out there. You can go get sophisticated as you want, but when you see the actual functionality of it, you know, it's just a real utilitarian tool. So, all right. And now you're going to want to tighten these together. And you're going to start seeing the glue really squeeze out. See right that gap right there. Watch that one. Start to see that glue pop out. Well, you know you got a tight fit. And you're going to want to make sure everything stays, you know, pretty square and even on you. So you want to kind of apply that. Two turns on one side, two turns on the other. All right, I think we're pretty good. I don't want to completely starve this, but I think we're good. Uh, I'm just going to take a paper towel, got some water over here. Uh, type on cleans up really well with water. It's kind of giving me a good idea. And also, when I'm turning, if I have some hard glue ridges, which I will have, uh, but it's just easier when I start turning it and I don't have these big mounds of uh, hard glue. The glue is going to be harder than the cork when you turn, so you're going to feel them. People use epoxy, rod bond, different types of stuff. I just like to use a good old fashioned type bond. I think I got most of the globs cleaned up. And now I can take a look to see if I need to apply any more pressure. I should have a pretty good even compression. So that looks good. I'm going to give this a good 24 hours to set up and then I can put it on the lathe and uh, we can do another video on turning grips. Hey, if you guys appreciate these videos, um, thumbs up, subscribe, like, all that good stuff really goes a long ways to, for uh, motivation and I uh, definitely know what people want to work on. So leave some comments behind and until next time, uh, enjoy some rod building.